So what we have here is the 2019 Chevrolet Trailblazer Z71. So you're wondering, why am I comparing this old Trailblazer to the new one? One, because why not? And two, this was once the Trailblazer we all know and love. And this particular Trailblazer is a very special one as well. You only can get it here in Chevrolet Makati. And speaking of Chevrolet Makati, I would like to thank them so much and to Mam Jan and Sarl Darren for making this review possible. Where you can tell this is already one of the most recognizable Chevrolets here in the Philippines because you see them almost everywhere right now. So this was also a very, very good PPV. And also with the amount of reviews i done already on my channel and with some of the sales executives I did around here in Metro Manila, some of them have Chevrolet Trailblazers. So that's saying something. The looks of this is way, way more commanding. I mean, just look at the size of it comparing to the crossover Trailblazer. Also being the Z71 package, you have decals here on the hood, the Z71 designation on the rear as well. Being a PPV, there's no cladding here whatsoever. You have a sidestep, mudguard. Yeah, this is a little bit on the older side of things however i must say this is a little bit more premium to look at from the outside hence the size of this thing so now with this 2022 chevrolet trailblazer premier crossover as you can see it is way way smaller than the ppv variant however the looks now looks just way way better because as i said earlier this looks like a camaro there's more chrome glitzy stuff here yes being a crossover they're going with the trend and also to take note, being a crossover now, the ground clearance of this is not bad. It's 178 millimeters, but compared to the older PPV, it is a whopping 235 millimeters. The older PPV is a capable off-roader. I mean, yes, this Trailblazer would have been a capable off-roader because other markets, like of course in the United States and Canada, they get all-wheel diversions. Sad we don't get them here. However, good to know those variants exist outside of here in the Philippines but I do wish Chevrolet bring those friends here and I do like the Chevrolet Trailblazer RS variant that really looks like a what ZL1 Camaro being a crossover it just looks a little bit better and it's not as small as you think I mean from what it is from PPV to a crossover that was the talking point with this new Trailblazer yeah it does look a little bit puny now just being honest from the PPV variant and also the side, yes, being a crossover now, there's a lot of cladding here and there. So unlike the PPV variant, this has an electronic tailgate. Although the PPV is just a bit heavier to lift up for a good reason. I'll get to that in a bit. So here now on the rear of the Chevrolet Trailblazer crossover, as I said earlier, you have an electronic tailgate. That's something the PPV doesn't have. Despite from a PPV to a crossover, you still have enough space. What is common between both Trailblazers, the seats fold flat at least. And yeah, that's a little bit, I can say, with this boot with the old trailblazer. I'll show you the PPV. Now, this is where things get a little bit more interesting. So now here at the rear of the older Chevrolet trailblazer. I'll just be honest with this old PPV. It is a little bit Tito looking, but I don't mind it because they are very common for a reason. The crossover just looks a little bit better, but this specific trailblazer is a little bit special. You want to know why? As I said, there's no electronic tailgate. This has been bulletproof. And also I noticed the tailgate stops here, but you can adjust it like this. Yeah. <laughs> These are only exclusive for Chevrolet Makati. You can do this not just with this old trailblazer, you can do it as well in the Colorado and the Chevrolet Suburban as well. And also being bulletproof, this is also one of the thickest. I'm no specialist with uh, bulletproof armoring vehicles. Asking Panda with that, he's way better uh, explaining those. In lifting this glass panel up, it is quite heavy, but you have to unlock this one first. Even this one is bulletproof. That is crazy. So, with the third row up, that was once was, you supposed to have 205 liters of space, but you don't have, as again, space because of the bulletproof type of material here. And look at that. At least you can lift this up. And this is the, I assume, the problem of the new Trailblazer. Where was the third row? I mean, yes, Chevrolet took the risk of making the Trailblazer from PPV to a crossover. And also, this is the only common thing with both Trailblazers, besides the badging, of course. When you fold the seats down, they are flat, at least. So with the third row down, this is how much space you have. And then with the second row down, you have way, way more space already. And also being the PPV, loading stuff might be a little bit difficult. Yes, it is really, really high. I mean, there's not much of a loaded, but carrying the stuff off itself might be a little bit difficult for some. So here in the interior of the all-new Chevrolet Trailblazer Premier, 
Okay, that might be not a fair comparison later on. I'll get to that in a bit. Of course, being the trailblazer, the specific trailblazer being bulletproof. So, uh, I won't go so much of the interior because I already have a full review on this. Of, as I said, link of that will be in the description down below. And I can say, yeah, I'll be honest, this one just feels a little bit more updated and a little bit more uh, premium to sit in. Comparing with the old one, there's a little bit more gloss back here, a little bit more leather, soft pads here. Not that much plastic as might one think. I thought the center console box was just this big, but you can remove it. Peace. And it is now way deeper than before. However, I did say the tracker is just a little bit better and a little bit wider. Even though this is a Chevrolet Myling system, the size of both infotainments are still 8 inches. But at least there's still Apple CarPlay and Android Auto for both. That is once when it was the 1.8, 1.9 million pesos. This one is 1.6, million pesos, this crossover. Yes, it may be a bit more affordable. However, that being bulletproof, that cost 5.5 million pesos. <laughs> yeah, that's all, that's all I have to say. It is way more expensive heads being bulletproof. Found out earlier, if you bulletproof a car, they need to be um, 2 liters above, hence being gasoline or diesel van. The engine has to be 2 liters and above. So, of course, this new Trailblazer won't do any good with bulletproof armoring. I think B1 will do, but the B6 arming of the older Trailblazer won't do on this, since this is only a 1.3 liter. A three cylinder engine, and that's a big boy 2.8 liter diesel turbocharged thing. Yes, I get to the engines later on. So, yes, here in the interior, I do prefer the interior of this than the older ones. And since I'm here already, the second row, as I said earlier, there's not much storage here. You only have heating control buttons on each side, however, space there in the back. Okay, just a little bit similar with the older Trailblazers, but that might be an unfair comparison, as I said, because that's a three-row PPV distance, only a five-seater crossover. So with that, it, I'll show you the older Trailblazer. Oh, these are heavy doors, really, really heavy. So this is the interior of the older Chevrolet Trailblazer. So I, I wonder how this sounds like. Okay, with the bulletproof arming, this is one of the thickest door thuds I've ever experienced. And then here in the interior, of course, being the Z71 uh, variant, and you have nice badge stitching here. That applies for both seats. Yes, the cabin may be a little bit more dated, but this still has a lot of tricks up its sleeve. To be honest, there's like a little bit more toys here than usual, to be honest. And then yes, here in the door card, you have silver trims here. There's even a Chevrolet badging here. I know in the Colorado, it will say the complete variant name here. But for the Trailblazer, it just says here Chevrolet. Yes, there's plastic here and there. But surprisingly, not much gloss black. And I can say with the looks of the interior, yes, you sit up high. So you do sit in a commanding position here. And then the looks of it, now I must say this looks way more American than the current uh, trailblazer I must say and then steering wheel it's hard it's girty the crossover trailblazer just a little bit nicer to the touch but hence this is a PPV I forgive everything and then I know in my script it says 8 inch infotainment system but this one looks like 6 inches if not me say it just looks smaller okay but at least you still have Android Auto and Apple CarPlay and unlike the crossover variant you have way bigger air conditioning vents and also this specific one is not second hand by the way this is this unit only has 46 kilometers so this is somewhat still brand new and hence with the with the b6 armoring god damn and also with b6 armoring bulletproof this can withstand what i think ak-47s glock pistols I'm trying to remember my csgo stuff Maybe an AWP also. So yeah, that's the first time I've experienced as well in a bulletproof vehicle. Glove box, pretty decent. And also, you have two cup holders here in the middle. They don't fit my water jug whatsoever. But here in the door, none of them fit my water jug at all. And then, unlike the Chevrolet Tailblazer crossover, there's no space in anymore in the middle for your phone. But somewhat fits my phone if you remove the case only. That's it. And what's a little bit more special with the older Tailblazer, you have... Two 12 volt sockets, just few more black buttons here. So, this is the second row of the old G71 
tribulator blazer and like in front you can notice the weight difference oh <laughs> yeah it is so yes that's the issue with b6 uh bulletproof arming they're really heavy now i mean knowing this engine is one of the most powerful in its class at its time this can still somewhat uh, handle very very heavy armoring this is where things a little bit get different with the trailblazer crossover but there's still simulators here and there you have two map packets you no longer have the heating control function here on the door but why on earth do you need that and then you have cubby spaces and two bottle holders on each side my water jug won't fit and then here in the center there is one 12 volt socket at least the crossover version does not have any amenities at all in the back and also you have air conditioning controls here and above in the ceiling hence you need that for the third row as well and this is what i didn't really like with the twelve blazer crossover you have a central armrest here with the ppv and my water jug fits here perfectly but unlike in the crossover there is a third row which i'll show you right now so here in the third row of the Chevrolet 12 Blazer PPV, it is a little bit of a tight squeeze, but feet room, my feet can go under so I have enough space. Knee room, okay, just enough headroom. Okay, oh, I mean third row here is just enough for me. I'm 5'4 by the way. So yeah, third row here will be easy for two people only because there is no seat here in the middle. There's just a cubby space here in the middle. And also surprisingly in the third row, the, even the window here is also bulletproof. That's also a nice touch. And yes, sitting here in the third row, and knowing this is bulletproof, it is a little bit more secured here than usual. And like in the second row, you have air conditioning vents here above as well. Also, weirdly, you have two cup holders on each side, but the cubby space is only here on the left side. So, get your water jug. They fit here. So, it is very, very weird that the front row the driver and the passenger side none of the cup holders fit my water jug but second row third row they fit perfectly wait i'll put it back up it is a little bit hard to put up the second row but if you want more space for your feet and just want to chill here in the back or do some activities you can tumble the seats forward look at that yeah this is what made that old trailblazer popular in the first place because you have the access of the third row yeah a little bit sad uh, <laughs> yeah just feels a little bit better here to be honest in the older trailblazer So this is the engine of the older Trailblazer. It's a 2.8 liter turbocharged four-cylinder diesel engine that produces 200 horsepower and one of the best in class at its time, maybe until now as well, 500 newton meters of torque. This was dubbed at the time the king of torque. Wish I can get my hands on a drive very soon, not the armoring version for obvious reasons, but I hope to get my hands on a regular Trailblazer soon. I'm very, very curious on how it drives. And as I said earlier, with a bulletproof arming you need engines above two liters so this one passes and knowing this has one of the most powerful torques in its class at this time maybe until now as well yes this will handle b6 bulletproof arming very very easily so this is the engine of the chevrolet trailblazer crossover this is a 1.3 liter turbocharged three-cylinder engine that produces 155 horsepower and 236 newton meters of torque and another difference this is mated to a cvt transmission compared to the six-speed automatic transmission of the older trailblazer and i did notice that heat shield is way way more larger than usual of course they're highlighting that this is an electric turbocharger and it does a lot of uh, heat management it is a lot more high tech than usual with the older one those are the only differences between the new one and the old trailblazer so despite the new one's flaws i still know what i would take home to be honest this still ticks all the boxes for me and yes as i said earlier the older trailblazer is a little bit outdated already but what i need though to be honest i don't need the diesel engine in my garage again except for one truck only just being honest but 
with this new tail blazer compared with the old one i still like the diving dynamics of this despite the flaws as i said with the amenities in the second row you still got the tech you still have the power this is still lively to drive i be honest the drive of this just a little bit more addictive than the tracker as i mentioned in my previous review so that concludes my review here with the old and new tail blaze i would like to thank again Shibri makati sir noli sir daryl and mamjen for making this review possible and i can confirm now there is a very very special chevrolet coming soon to my channel i cannot wait to drive that and i'll give you a hint it looks like this one Bye bye